It's not news that many organizations are going with a multi-cloud approach to minimize risks as well as optimize costs. However, doing that brings with it its own complexity of learning multiple tools to manage those environments as well as multiple tools to deploy to those environments. In this session, Samir Akhub shares his experience on why customers are adopting a multi kubernetes strategy and demonstrates how GitLab can help you have a consistent approach even when you're deploying to multiple Kubernetes environments, all without switching out of the GitLab console. Samir is a certified Kubernetes and AWS professional and has experience working with a variety of customers in APAC. Remember that all of our speakers are available on chat, so feel free to drop your questions and comments and interact with the speakers and one another at any point of time during the event. Over to you, Samir. Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me today in, uh, in this session where we will go through how we can uh, uh, deploy and manage against uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters. We will use Amazon EKS, uh, VMware, TKGI, and Google GKE clusters in our session and, and demo today through one uh, GitLab um, instance. Um, to start with, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Samara Koub. I'm a solution architect with uh, uh, GitLab based in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, these are my uh, contacts. Please feel free to, to add me uh, after the session if you have any questions. I'm always happy to add people to my uh, 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 network. So basically, uh, when we discuss about um, multiple Kubernetes cluster, I believe the question has moved from over the last few years from why Kubernetes into having multiple Kubernetes or multi Kubernetes clusters strategy. And if I would, there are so many reasons when I did my research for uh, this slide, but the, I believe the three main points here are having a deployment flexibility from applications point of view of simply, I want to be able to deploy my cloud native application to the best suited Kubernetes cluster available in the market without worrying about the operation and the automation tools and they should be able to support me in that, that cluster. So that's why one reason. The other one is on the top of for most of the CIOs and CEOs and uh, managers is basically run my applications in the uh, cloud native applications in the most cost is effective way, which means I want out of the available uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters offering in the available in the market, I want the flexibility, I want to be able to pick the most cost effective uh, option and host my application there. I, and I definitely don't want to be limited by uh, technical capabilities due to the automation and deployment tool. The third one is for the operators and security uh, experts. Basically, whenever wherever I deploy my application as a, as a developer, I expect that any automation and deployment and DevSecOps tool or engine should be able to run just next to where the application is, is deployed, which means that I want to minimize any public network traverse between the application that's deployed in one of the cloud offering and any endpoint or applications uh, or, or the source code, uh, if it's the source code is hosted uh, hosted on-prem. I want all the whole deployment, I want the whole uh, provisioning of my uh, cloud native applications to happen within an engine, an automation engine that sits in next to the um, deployed uh, uh, or next to the uh, uh, actual chosen uh, cloud platform. So these are the three main, I believe, the three main uh, multi Kubernetes strategy um, reasons or why we should have a multi Kubernetes strategy. Deployment flexibility for the developers, cost effective, and definitely for security experts and operators being able to minimize any service attack and being able to distribute my deployment and my automation across multiple uh, Kubernetes clusters. So when we talk about a Kubernetes here, uh, we, um, our multiple Kubernetes cluster, it's not only about just 
pushing the application to these to these uh, different clusters it's also about the whole operation life cycle which starts from provisioning these these clusters and then also monitoring and digesting the logs from these these different clusters so that i can as an operator i can use the same platform the same gitlab platform to take actions against these clusters in terms of scalability scale up scale down increase resources attach more or attach more resources and not only that i want to be able to automate this operation uh, life life cycle based on the digested matrices uh, logs and errors from the deployed uh, application uh, uh, applications basically the same concepts we apply in the devops life cycle where we de de uh, develop, we deploy, we monitor, we enhance the application. We want to apply the same thing, the same concepts into managing uh, and controlling multi-build Kubernetes cluster. I provision these clusters, I monitor them, I digest the logs and, and uh, 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 matrices from these clusters. I automate actions based on uh, these inputs and then reflect them to the multiple Kubernetes clusters in a way that would minimize uh, any uh, uh, disruption uh, uh, to the uh, running or deployed applications. Now, in GitLab, we have helped so many customers worldwide to uh, adopt the deployment strategy or the provisioning strategy for their applications in one single pipeline to uh, push these applications to multiple Kubernetes clusters uh, uh, based on their preferences. What I mean here, some customers I've worked with have decided to do uh, an on-prem, or sorry, uh, an on-cloud uh, Kubernetes using Amazon EKS to, to do the building for the applications. And then doing the testing using uh, another Kubernetes cluster for the sake of uh, example here, VMware uh, TKGI. And then once this build and test phases are done, we are pushing the application to a third Kubernetes cluster. Remember, all within the same uh, pipeline into uh, Google uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, engine. And we will see that live in, in the demo in, in a second. Before I move to the second, I want to uh, stress on something here. It's not only about pushing the application, it's also about delivering these applications with quality. I mean, the engine should not only allow me to push the application to the Kubernetes clusters, we are talking here about cloud native applications. So capabilities like canary deployment of blue green deployment, uh, staged uh, deployment and automation for failover between different platforms should be in the core of the platform. And this is what GitLab enables customers to do. Uh, in one platform, I can do the staging, then I can do the canary deployment to my production, and then I can select how much I want of the production workload to be diverted into this canary deployment instance before I say, okay, all good, the canary deployment is done. Let's go and deploy that to the production environment, but let's do that in a staged uh, way. So. Let's go for the demo. In this demo, we will see how we can use multiple Kubernetes clusters in one GitLab project, and actually in one GitLab pipeline, and how we can deploy our application as it's progressing through the pipeline from the review, staging, and production to each of these different Kubernetes clusters. Here I have a Kubernetes uh, uh, GitLab project where I have added and defined the uh, three Kubernetes clusters, AWS EK, uh, EKS, VMware TKGI and Google GKE. And just to see how we can define them, it's as simple as you, you add a new cluster and you define the connection uh, target for that cluster, including the uh, certificates and uh, the service, service account. And as you see here for the VMware TKGI, I've assigned a base domain for all the applications that will be deployed there to be TKGI hyphen cluster. Uh, uh, some gitlab.com same goes for uh, the EKS where I have assigned of course a different base domain EKS cluster and the GKE as well uh, a different a third one so we will use these domains to 
see how our applications can be accessed or deployed and will be accessed on uh, these clusters. So if, you, if we go under the pipeline here, we see that we have, um, uh, uh, we can run a pipeline against the master branch. Let's go and trigger it and see how it goes. So as you see here, this is a master a pipeline on the master branch where, where it will build this, uh, this branch then uh, do some kind of container testing. Of course, in GitLab, you can add all kinds of uh, different vulnerabilities uh, testing. And then this is the interesting part for our demo. It will deploy an instance of our application to the review staging stage so that it make it uh, ready for the dust to run on that uh, instance to do dynamic application uh, security testing before it progress and deploy the application to the staging and then to the production environment as in Canary and, um, and roll out, uh, uh, staged roll out of the application. So for the sake of time, let's just, uh, until it passed these three stages, let's review a previously deployed uh, pipeline here, where it has already progressed through the build test and, and the review stage here. So if we, click on this review stage, you see that it has deployed the pipeline or this application to the TKGI um, uh, Kubernetes cluster. Actually, either we can click here or actually in GitLab, it, they're going into, going to the environments uh, option. You see, this is the, our deployed application and it is deployed to um, the review stage. And all that I can do is come here and click on the open. And this is a live uh, deployed uh, instance of my application. And as we agreed, this is the base domain for the application and it is deployed to the TKGI cluster. So it is, by the way, the whole pipeline we are using in this demo is built using uh, GitLab Auto DevOps, which is basically a best practices based pipeline for deploying uh, application or uh, applications to the um, uh, Kubernetes uh, uh, clusters, including the whole stages lifecycle for DevSecOps. Basically, the main purpose is to reduce the complexity and speed up the delivery cycle for uh, cloud native applications. Cool. So if we go back to the pipelines here, we see hopefully our initial pipeline is progressing. Yep. So it's now it's progressing it through through the review. So if we go again to the environment, we should start seeing other the environment for the, the new pipeline. So here I see that from the previous review, eight instances has been uh, have been deployed. Uh, these red uh, green uh, instances are basically the, um, uh, sorry, green squares are basically the deployed pods. If we go in the um, uh, uh, options here, you see that I can go for monitoring. I can go for even a terminal, which will take me to an indirect SSH into one of the pods of the, uh, for the deployed application if I need to, um, check on this application. So if we go back into environments here, let's go to our pipeline and see how it is progressing. So it is deploying against the review stage here. Okay, let's go back and let me show you something. So going into the environments again. Okay, here we go. The application, the, the pod, the production uh, based, uh, sorry, the uh, master based uh, branch uh, pipeline has deployed, has provisioned for us a review stage here, and this is coming as you can see here, it is 20 second, uh, 20, 25 seconds uh, ago. And this is coming from the pipeline that was deployed 
that we triggered at the beginning of, of this demo coming from here. You see it is now running the dust. Let's go check on this job. Okay, cool. So the other thing I wanted to mention as well is going through these options, you can view live environment, which we saw. You can also click on this one, which will take you into the monitoring uh, dashboard for the underlying Kubernetes cluster assigned to that environment, which means not only I can follow up on the status of my deployed application, but also I can follow up on the status of my Kubernetes cluster underlying that application. As we agreed in the presentation, it's not about only deploying the application, but also be able to gather uh, matrices on, on these deployed applications. You see here, there is a, uh, uh, an alert, which I defined before. Basically, you can define, if we go here, you can define alerts on threshold based on any of these matrices. And these alerts can actually run a URL or a webhook, trigger a webhook to take actions based on these thresholds. Basically, um, what I'm saying here, if the total cores are more than 24, then please trigger for me. And, and in, in my instance, I'm triggering actually a pipeline from a totally different project. And the actual, the purpose of that pipeline is to scale my, my application. So this is a web URL. Uh, webhook URL for triggering the, uh, a pipeline in that different application. And actually, if I take you there, this is this is the other pipeline. Uh, this is the other application, a different tab. And you can see here is here are the, the pipelines. Right. So let's go back here and check on again on the environment. Um, it will load. Let's check on our pipeline. Cool. So now the pipeline has moved from the review into the staging. As you remember, if you still remember, under Kubernetes, we have assigned the EKS to the, to the staging environment. So now if I go under the environments, here we go. This is the environment staging, which is mapped to the EKS. So if I now click on the open live environment for this application, yes, the base domain is the EKS base, base domain, the EKS uh, uh, cluster base domain. You see the first instance, the, the one it was TKGI, the second one is a base domain for the EKS. And again, same story. I can, okay, my application is deployed to the, um, to the staging environment, but how the staging environment is doing, I can go for monitoring for my staging environment. And this is, again, this is another, uh, the, the monitoring dashboards for that, that environment where, as we agreed, where I can go and basically define if I take it the URL for my webhook, here it is, and I can go here, the current, for example, the current cores are 15. 6.3, let's say, if it is alert, if it is just for the sake of the demo, if it's more than 14, then please trigger for me this pipeline here, which will scale the EKS, right? And this pipeline, as, as we agreed, is actually a pipeline here, right? Which will scale the EKS cluster, this one it will be triggered to scale the EKS cluster with just one, one job, right? So now my application is deployed. The other thing is the logs. Actually, I can get logging or the generated logs per uh, uh, EKS environment or per Kubernetes environment. In my, in my case, I have the staging and I also previously had, had the review. So. I can follow up on the uh, application status. I can follow up on the matrices or thresholds and, and, and the infrastructure status for my Kubernetes clusters across. And I can gather the logs. I can go into um, uh, open or uh, access my pods uh, through the terminal. Also, now the last step here is if we go to our pipeline, 
here, you see that it's now ready to start provision my application for Canary deployment. So if I click on this one, what it will be doing is it will start, it will provision instances for my application into uh, uh, the production defined Kubernetes environment. And if you remember under the uh, Kubernetes we assigned, we map that to the Google uh, GKE. So now I will start having pods de deployed there. So either I go here or simply again, operations environments. And I should soon see another environment added to the list. This is the, the review environment. This is the staging environment. And soon I should get the canary or the production environment added to the, to the list once that, uh, that job is progressing. See that in a second. Mm -hmm. Here we go. It's loading. Yeah, and that's added. So if we go now to our environments, and here we go, we have something deployed in the production under the canary job. And it, you see here, these orange circles are basically the canary instances deployed in the production environment. Right, and from within GitLab, the same page, I can now start diverting gradually workload from real life workload from the production environment into these Canary inst deployed instances. So I can say, okay, I want 50% <coughs> changing the ratio. So the idea here is I, I, I can start is diverting more workload to the canary deployment. By the way, under the hood, what's happening here, it's using the N Nginx uh, 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 controller to using uh, annotations on the Nginx controller to divert the workload to the canary deployed pods for, uh, from the uh, production workload. And I can control that. So basically it's, it's a kind of, um, doing some sort of blue green deployment where I still have the production environment, but I am I started to, to uh, divert and send more workload to the Canary deployment. Once I'm happy with that, the last step would be this rollout. This rollout job here is coming actually from, if we go back to our pipeline, this is coming from this part. Here, these are the production rollouts. So if I go into my environments, I can start rolling out, for example, 50% of my workload, please go ahead and roll it out to this, uh, to this environment. And well, it will start deploying my application gradually to the production environment. So just to conclude here, uh, in this demo, we saw how we can have one GitLab project with multiple, in our case, three different Kubernetes clusters defined to that project. We see, we saw how uh, each of these Kubernetes clusters can be used for one of the stages during the uh, DevSecOps, uh, DevSecOps pipeline, the review, staging, and production. We saw how we can monitor and actually define actionable alerts on these uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, under the matrices, we saw how we can even gather the logs for each of these environments. And also we saw how we can, GitLab can enable the Canary deployment where partially our uh, number of Insta pods can be deployed into the production environment. And then you can control how the production workload can start out, how, what's the percentage of the production workload that should be diverted or sent to these uh, 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 canary pods. And at the end, we saw how you can also from the same screen do uh, 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 a staged rollout from 10%, 25% to until you reach to the 100%. Overall, by the end of the day, we will have a, a safe deployment to, the, to these Kubernetes clusters with a full end-to-end -end view on what's happening uh, under the hood. This concludes my demo for today. I hope it was uh, helpful for you. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm ready for any questions. Thank you very much.